In this video, we're going to explore Dozzle, which is a service that allows you to view your Docker logs through a web-based user interface. So rather than using the command line and executing Docker logs commands, Dozzle provides a web UI that allows you to view your logs in a nicer format on the web. And this can be beneficial for real-time monitoring and also easy troubleshooting. You can go to the web UI and you can look at the logs and diagnose any issues. Let's dive in and we're gonna see how Dozzle works in this video. So we've got the Dozzle documentation open here. We can see that it's a lightweight web-based Docker log viewer that provides real-time monitoring and easy troubleshooting. And we can look at the project on GitHub as well and we can see that it's got 3,700 stars. So this is quite a popular project and it allows you to view these Docker logs in real time in a nice web-based UI. So let's see how we can do that now. Now in order to do that, we need to actually have some containers on our computer. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm gonna use two containers, one for Nginx and another for Redis. So let's close the GitHub page and I'm gonna to go to the Nginx Docker Hub image. We can use the docker pull command in order to pull Nginx down to our local computer. So let's copy that and I'm gonna open up a terminal here and we can run the docker pull command in order to get that image onto our computer. Now once that's downloaded, I'm gonna do the same thing for the Redis image and we can just use the docker pull Redis command. Now we're gonna start these containers in a second, but what do they do? Let's start with Nginx. If we scroll down on the Docker Hub page, you can see that Nginx is an open source reverse proxy server. And commonly it's used with HTTP and HTTPS for web-based traffic. And you'll often see Nginx as part of an application stack as the reverse proxy server behind the scenes that's actually serving the application. We can also look on Docker Hub for the Redis image and we can click through to that and what we're gonna see is that Redis is an open source key value store, basically a key value database and that can function as a data structure server. Now this is commonly used when you're using caching in applications. You can cache your items using Redis in a very performant way. And you can see that docker pull command at the top right that we used for Redis. Now, links to both of these are gonna be in the description of this video. We're going to reference the documentation for both of these Docker images. Now, if we go down here, a very basic docker run command is shown. So I'm gonna copy that. We don't need anything special in this video. We just need to copy that. And I'm gonna clear the terminal here. And if we type the docker ps command, it's going to show all of the running containers at the moment. You can see we don't have any containers. What I'm gonna do now is paste in that command and it's docker run. We're giving the container we're about to start a name of some Redis. We're running the container in detached mode and that is the name of the image that we're going to start the container from. So let's start this command and we get back the container ID when we run that command. Now we're gonna do something similar for Nginx. So let's go back to Docker Hub. I'm going to go back to the Nginx page and if we scroll down here, we have an example Docker run command. I'm going to copy that and I'm gonna paste that into the terminal and then we can clear this out. Before we run this though, I'm gonna actually change this command up a little bit. I'm gonna delete the volume. We don't need that in this video. So this volume with the dash V command, we can remove that. And once that's been removed, I'm actually going to add a port mapping from port 80 on the host to port 80 in the container. And that's going to allow us to go to localhost on port 80 and send a request that's going to be served by Nginx. We're going to see that in a second. So let's execute this docker run command for the Nginx container. And if we now run the docker ps command, you can see we now have two containers running. The first one with this ID is the Nginx container, and we also have the Redis container. Now let's move on to Dozzle. Let's say we have these containers running, and these are very common pieces of an application architecture. We have an Nginx container and a Redis container, and these may be generating logs. And we want to view these logs within the context of our Docker service. Now, of course, we saw in a previous video that should be appearing on the screen now that we can run the Docker logs command and we can provide a container ID to that. And then we get back all of the container logs for that container and these are printed out to the terminal when we run docker logs. But this particular interface might not be the most convenient, especially if you're not too comfortable with the command line, but you still want to view the logs that are generated in your application containers. And that's precisely what Dozzle will offer. It allows you to view these containers in real time using a web-based UI. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see an example of this UI that is on the screen at the moment. We're going to run that locally, but we need to actually get the docker image for Dozzle in order to actually start this service that's gonna serve these logs. So let's go to the get started section. And in the get started section, you can see there is a command here 
when we use the Docker CLI. And we also have options for running this in a Docker Compose setup as well. We're going to analyze these a bit later. I'm actually going to go to the GitHub page for Dozzle and we can see this a little bit better on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the image from Docker Hub and this is the Docker pull command. And again, there'll be a link to this GitHub page below the video. So let's copy the command and this is the Dozzle image from Docker Hub. We can then go back to our terminal and paste this in. And when we execute that command, it's going to pull this image from Docker Hub and then we can actually start the image and run this Dozzle service. So let's clear the terminal and go back to the documentation. And what we're gonna do is copy this command here. So let me copy that to the clipboard and go back to the terminal. And we're gonna look at what this command does. So again, we're executing Docker run because we want to start a container from the image. And the image in question is at the end of the Docker run command and that's the Dozzle image. We're giving our new container a name of Dozzle and we're running it in detached mode. And this is an important piece of this command. We need to have this volume. And what this volume is going to do is it's going to mount the docker.soc file. And this is a Unix socket. It's going to mount that into the Dozzle container at that particular path. So slash var slash run slash docker.soc. And we have a flag here at the end of the volume and that's the RO flag and that stands for read only. Now this docker.socket file, this is what the Docker CLI uses to execute Docker commands. We're mounting this into the Dozzle container so that Dozzle itself can run Docker commands and pull the logs from the other running containers. So that's the purpose of this volume. We're mounting the Docker socket file into the Dozzle container at this particular path. And then finally, we have a port mapping here from port 8888 to port 8080. And that's going to allow us to access the Dozzle web API at this port number on our local host. Now, after all of that, when I finally run the command, I'm getting a command not found. And that's because when we copied this from the Dozzle documentation, we also included that dollar sign. We don't need that. It's just a Docker run command. So let's run this now. And when we run that, we get back the container ID for the Dozzle container. Now, just to prove it's running, let's again run Docker PS. And we can see now that we have a container ID for a Dozzle container. So now that it's running, let's go to the browser and I'm going to navigate to localhost 8888 and when we go to the web UI you can see we get this interface here with the Dozzle information. So we have the containers that are running just in this table below and we can see the Dozzle container itself as well as Nginx and Redis and we get some information at the top. For example, we have three running containers and these containers are using up this particular amount of CPU usage and this amount of memory. Now, of course, our containers are just sitting there. They're not doing anything, but you can see the average CPU usage here and memory usage for each one of the containers. And if we go to an individual container, let's say the Nginx container here, we are going to see the logs for that container. And you can see them here in this nice web UI. It looks a lot better than just running Docker logs on the command line. If we scroll down, you can see all of the logs that have been generated here. For example, at the bottom, we have the request to localhost here. And that was a get request that Nginx took and served back to the user. And we can see that reflected here in this access log for Nginx. So we can view the logs and we can also do split screens. For example, if I wanted to look at the Nginx logs and the Redis logs, I can just click click that icon there and it's going to bring up a split screen and show one on the left, one on the right. So we can see the logs for Redis now on the right hand side. And this is very useful if you have two services that are codependent, for example, and you want to view the logs as they run through some kind of process. And you can have as many of these split screens as you want, I think. For example, we have Dozzle here running. If we click that, we then get the screen split into three panels and you can see the Dozzle logs on the right hand side. I'm going to close that for now but we're just demonstrating some of the features of Dozzle. And you can see again on these log pages, for example, the memory and CPU usage at the top right hand side for each of these containers. And usefully as well, we get a very nice format for the timestamp for when these logs were generated. So if you have multiple services running in Docker, you can use Dozzle to kind of view all of the logs that are being generated from each of these. And you can also do some searching as well. If you look at the top left, there's a button that says search and we can then search for particular containers in our environment, for example, the Nginx container. Now, there are some other useful functionalities here just before we finish this video. If we look at the top right, we have a drop down here. And what we can do is we can actually download the logs that we have and we can search through the logs for a particular container. So I'm going to try that just now. We're 
run the Nginx logs, if I search for a particular piece of text, for example, get to find all HTTP get requests, we get back only the logs that contain that search term and you can see them reflected in the user interface. And as I said, this is a real time system. So if I go to another tab on another browser here and I start sending requests to Nginx, you can see the logs that are being generated in real time. So Dozzle is very useful if you want to perform some real-time monitoring, for example, tracking some kind of process that you're building in the application or something that might be going wrong in an application. This web UI gives you visibility into the logs and it allows you to easily search for particular entries to find out what's going on and any anomalies in the system. Now, before we finish, I want to take a quick look back at the documentation here. And we've seen how to use with the Docker CLI using the Docker run command. But of course, if you have lots of services, you might be using something like Docker Compose. Now, it's very easy to just add another service for Dozzle to your Docker Compose file. You can see the configuration here at the bottom, and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see that. We have a service called Dozzle, and we can specify a container name, and of course we need the image to pull from Docker Hub, and that's the Dozzle image. And you can see again, the use of the volume to mount the Docker socket file into the Dozzle container. And of course you can add a port mapping in order to actually access the web UI as well. And this mount here, you can make it a read-only mount. And if we go back to the GitHub documentation for Dozzle, let's scroll down here to the Docker Compose section and you can see that in the docker-compose.yaml file, the volume that's used in this file is specified as a read-only mount. And I think it's worth just highlighting what that means at the end of this video. So I'm gonna to go to the Docker documentation on using a read-only volume. Now for some development applications, the container needs to write into the bind mount so that the changes are propagated back to the Docker host that's running those containers. And that's an example of a read-write volume when the container actually can change the data and reflect that change back to the host. At other times though, we have containers that only need read access to the data. And for those containers, we can create volumes that are read only. So you can add the read only flag in order to do this. And in a Docker Compose file, it's very easy. You can just add this to the end of the volume. The purpose of this, if we look at this command, the Docker socket file that's on the host, we want to make that accessible within the Dozzle container so that it can run the Docker commands. But the Dozzle container has no need to actually change that file so we can make it a read-only mount. So that's just a final note on the volume that you're mounting into the container. And that might be slightly better actually for security as well because that way the Dozzle container, if it's compromised, it cannot change the Docker socket on the host. And that's gonna be a little bit more secure in that sense. Now that's all for this video. We've shown a quick demonstration of how to view Docker logs in a web user interface using Dozzle. And we saw some of the features of Dozzle, for example, the ability to search through the logs, as well as the ability to split the screen into multiple panels in order to view logs from multiple containers at the same time. And we saw the real-time features of these logs when new logs are coming into the service, they're going to be added to the output that you see in the web UI immediately. And that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the Better Stack channel for more of this content. And if you'd like to see more content on Docker, let us know in the comments. We also have this guide on the Better Stack platform, and this will tell you everything you need to know about logging in Docker. And we have a previous video on the subject as well, but there's lots more that we can cover. So if you have any ideas, let us know in the comments. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.